Welcome to Six Figure Coaches with Luke Charlton, where every week we interview a successful coach and break down their business. We take you behind the scenes in their marketing, advertising, and sales campaigns. We show you what's working. We show you their frameworks, their proven strategies, so you can implement them in your business to grow. Now let's bring on this week's guest. Here is your host, Luke Charlton. Hey, this is Luke Charlton here, and welcome back to another episode of the uh, Six Figure Coaches Show with Luke Charlton. And um, super excited to have you here for another episode. Very, very excited for today's guest. She is a client and um, getting some amazing results in her coaching business, which I'm excited to share with you. Actually, she's got a lot of great media exposure as well, which I'm going to be sharing with you, or she's going to be sharing with you how she how she got that media, which I'm really excited for because that's something that I want to know more about as well. Now, just before we bring our guest on, um, just quickly, if you are a successful coach, you're earning over 250K per year or more and you want to be promoted and celebrated on this show, all you have to do is go to, I'm pretty sure the link is podcast.lukecharlton.com. Just go to podcast.lukecharlton.com. If that doesn't work, just uh, just just go to lukecharlton.com. You'll find the podcast section. And then you can um, apply to be interviewed on this show and be promoted and celebrated and get your message out and your programs to a wider audience. So just go to podcast.lukecharlton.com. Now, with that being said, let's get stuck into today's uh, into today's interview. Again, super excited to bring her on. She is a client. Her name is D Toza, and she works with couples who are going through infidelity. So either the the um, the wife has cheated or the the husband has cheated, and she basically helps repair their marriage and brings them back together. And you know what's actually also amazing, uh, which blew me away when I started working with D, is that she has a ninety six percent success rate. So I'm going to talk to her about how she. How she actually has achieved that as well, because I think that's that's quite amazing, uh, particularly for for this market. So, um, D, welcome to today's um, uh, interview. Super excited to have you on. Now, just before you tell me about how you have such a high success rate, and before we dive into your marketing and sales process, can you just let the audience know? Because I know how much you love um, talking about you know yourself and your bio. And <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> can, <laughs> can you just let them know? Um, yeah. Just let them know a little bit about you, how you kind of, uh, if you want to, how you got into this space and, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Well, I never know how far to go in uh, the backstory because it's a long one. It's over 30 years. In fact, it's over 45 years, which sounds wow. absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, um, I uh, was a teacher for 15 years, working with very difficult children who were showing up at school looking absolutely miserable, couldn't learn, was stressed out, under eight-year-olds mainly. And so I started checking with the just an instinct I had to check with what was going on at home, found the parents were in great strife. There was a lot of conflict, a lot of divorce going on, breakups, and these are the kids were playing it out at school. Yeah. So I started doing parent-teacher interviews, the first of its kind in Australia, believe it or not, from that time. That was in South Australia. But I didn't do them about academics. I brought the parents in to talk about what was going on at home, and I yeah. started trying to help them. Yeah, Ridiculous. Wow. I had no training in it. There wasn't any anyway, hardly back then, 1970-ish. Anyway, uh, I ended up leaving teaching after 15 years, did a second career, thought I'd do child psychology uh, for that reason, to see if I could manage that end of it, and then ended up through a sequence of serendipity events getting into neuroscience and psychology, and yep. doing a psych degree, mainstream psychologist, treating anxiety and depression. And from the outset, my same instinct kicked in and I could ask and find there was a relationship issue going on behind a lot of it, okay? So I would go in without the training again and just without treading on toes, do the best I could to see if we could create some harmony. And I worked out I could do it. Yeah. And so the depression and anxiety disappeared. So then I decided just to have couples. So over about 10 years, I gradually did more and more couples until 20 years ago, I did 80% of my work was couples yep. only. And they were general over everything. There was everything you can imagine that would go wrong with couples I did, I worked with, and I've had a very high success rate in that. And the reason I know is because I'm one of the few that came out of the neurosciences background, which measured so spreadsheets and measuring, I was measuring everything to see how I could do it better, what did this mean, how many sessions they had to have, blah, blah. So I did all yeah. the analytics constantly. Um, and then I 
decided what I really loved and was the best at was working with couples recovering or wanting to repair, and that's the key word, from an yep. infidelity. So that so 10-ish years ago, I went into around 80 to 90% were all infidelity couples, and yeah. that was my marketing approach, and the other 10 12% were the other couples' issues because pretty well behind all the couples who have an infidelity issue, it's that their relationship, not all of them, but a lot of them, the ones I see anyway, a lot of relationship issues that could have been dealt with before and would have avoided it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so that's what took me there. And so now for 12 odd years, it's been I just do all couples and now in the last four years, only infidelity. Okay, interesting. And that's actually, go. I, I say this a lot, you know, to my subscribers on my list and um, in my other podcast, you know, picking that, that painful problem. And obviously, infidelity is a very, very painful problem in the relationship. Mm. Now, do you want to... Um, let let the uh, listener in on what the price point is of your, I obviously know, but do you want to let yes. them know what that is? Oh, I'm what it is now. Absolutely happy yeah. to. Yes, yes, because a lot of people would say it's arrogant, and I'm. I want to say because I want to show other coaches like you don't. Yeah, it's not arrogant, and people yeah. can't wait to get it to me, and it's twenty five thousand dollars US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and okay. so the reason why I ask that is. Mm. is because there's a lot of coaches listening in um, and they think, you know, in order to sell high ticket, you need to be uh, a business coach or helping someone make money, right, which is not the case. Mm. It's no. you, you pick a really painful problem. And, and the key word there that you said is like they're, they're kind of almost they're happy to, they feel when they find someone that they can help solve that problem for them, mm. they feel relief when they're, and I hear this so often, they feel relief when they transfer you that money, like, oh, my gosh, I finally found someone that I know can help mm. me solve this problem. Mm. So you don't need to be, yeah, you don't need to be a business coach to sell high ticket and you're proof positive of, of that, which I think's which I think is awesome. Um, well, awesome. I love that you're selling 25K and you do it, you do it all the time. I do it all the time. And what took me there was yep. people disrespecting and the $250 an hour scenario. Yep. And not bothering to come. It was back in the days when I saw people in yeah. the rooms now i don't everything's all online yep. but they wouldn't come they couldn't be bothered or they'd come in 20 minutes late and this and that and the other and i would be firm as i could be but i thought i don't really want to be in that space of being firm that yep. isn't me i don't want to do that i don't want to have to be cross with someone because he's always late or she is so mm -hmm. i decided to do uh, a package and i started off with six week package okay. <laughs> and then and, and, and I started off with, I've I tried in 2018, I tried diff four different price points. Yep. And um, different time frames till I got what was the sweet spot, really. Okay, great. And so what was, so you went from around like charging some type of hourly type of rate yep. to hourly. Hourly. Mm -hmm. And then did you kind of just go straight to high ticket? Um, what, well, what I called process? high ticket, but it was 8,000 then. Okay. And yeah. then why did you keep going up? Is it because you found that you got better results, people were more committed, or you just yes. knew that you are worth more? What was the... What, you like, said it, both, both. I got better results because okay. they felt more committed. And yep. around under ten or 15,000, they didn't care still because wow. people that had ten or 15,000 yeah. had 25 or 50. That's the in the world I worked in. My market was nearly all, prior to me starting high ticket, I had high-end business people coming to me anyway. So yep. that really wasn't such a difficult move. And I, I would ask, I would just say a price and see what the feedback was and then charge that for that one and while I was testing it and then write my notes on what I, what I would they have, I put 18. One guy came and he wanted to double, he wanted double the length. He said, we can't do it because I do 90 days, as you know, 12 weeks. Yeah, and uh, we got to the ten week mark, and he said, "This isn't enough. We're going to need more. Um, I want to give you half price for the next twelve weeks." I yep. said, "Oh no, you can do another twelve weeks, <clears throat> but it'll be double." I got to put my bank account that afternoon. They've still got two weeks left on the other one. The money was in it. Yeah, wow. From overseas. Yeah, because yeah. I use a transfer, one of those transfer systems that's very fast. Yeah, and he, and then at the week thirteen. They, they already had, they have freebies after that anyway, built in extra yeah. packages. They didn't need any more. He went, oh, damn, but I refunded it. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. No. And how, I thought that was an exercise. I don't think many people would ever experience that, actually. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great strategy. Thanks for sharing that. Um, now, one thing I know about your market is that you generally, as you said, help like you know, business um, 
mm. you know, uh, business owners, that type of thing, people with a lot to lose, which I think, I mean, it's very important when you're selling high ticket, right? If you're selling 25K, no matter what the market, it's generally going to be for a very specific you know, type of market, right? It's not just going to be for for, for anyone, right? Your yeah. general. Um, and so what I think is important for the, the audience to understand is that for 25K, it's very valuable for your dream client, which is a business owner that stands to lose. Like if they, if they, you know, if their marriage breaks up, right, they're obviously they're, they're losing their relationship, maybe access to their kids, but they're also losing a lot of their assets, right? So there's monetary, there's, there's a lot to lose there as well. So it's important for the value, like for 25K, it might seem like a lot, but for them, it actually is, is no. not a lot in compared in comparison mm. to what it is they're, they're losing. So that's just another way of, you know, framing a high ticket offer, right. And showing like what they could actually lose by things not coming to fruition that they, they yeah. want. And in my, in my world, the um, other uh, equation is that they're going to go to lawyers because they are earning of a substantial yeah. sum and substantial assets. Yep. They're each going to pay $20,000 down. That's 40,000 just to get going with the lawyer. Yep. So it is a different market for that. But that they're, they're 40 or 25. Which one are they going to choose? 25 to go for safety or perceived safety with me. Well, it is safety, but, you know, it's perceived at that point. Or yep. they're going to go and get ripped apart by lawyers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly mm. right. That's another value proposition there. Mm. Um, all right. So let's have a chat about um, how the main ways that and then I'll go, go into the media side of things. So I think that's quite interesting. Mm. So the main ways that you're uh, attracting clients at the moment to your business? Well, it's really the th the two streams is your your work you do with me, with my Facebook yep. ads, yep. with my Google ads. Uh, that was a lot. Now it's minimal again and we're having to rejig, you know, a little teeny bit about that. I want to talk to you more yep. about it. Yep. Uh, and then the, word, the rest of it sounds unusual, doesn't it? But I have had word of mouth coming. A lot mm. of my clients are in the U.S., and I've had them coming from an out of state from one person referral to another person in another state. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Well, hey, from, friend, they're friends, though, right? That's where it's like, is it friends referring friends? Or not, like, not totally friends, but connected, enough connected that they knew about the trouble, but not yeah. close friends, no. Oh, is it because these, like, if these are kind of like business owners, um, executives, they're usually quite connected, right? So that's mm. probably a reason why you're getting some a lot of referrals come through you you've had a lot mm -hmm. of referrals come through for a long time now this is kind of like your main way isn't it yeah yeah and then, mm. and then you hired me because we want to scale this program now it's basically That's right. yes we scale yeah yeah because you're, you're starting to hire other coaches and sort of find mm. your own methodology cool that's right so i've got one on and keeping him nearly fully um booked and i've got two more coming on so that's yep. Okay, great. And mm -hmm. so not, uh, it, you said that it's funny about the referral thing, but it's not really because there's a lot of coaches, most coaches are referral based. Um, and then they come to see me because they want to scale. And so, but going through referrals, like, is there any specific strategies that you use to generate more referrals? Look, I don't know if it's a strategy. I've been going to ask you if you thought it was for a while. Mm -hmm. I send after every session, I will I don't send long-winded focus sheets or anything like that after a session like people would in general coaching, but yep. I send them something that's very positive and I comment on how they looked, how they reacted to something we did in the session. Now, I do it because everything I do is on WhatsApp because they're nearly yep. a lot of them are overseas. So I do it on WhatsApp. If they're in Australia, I use text, of course. Uh, don't use Messenger. There's reasons for that. Anyway, uh, I send a very warm text or message and then they reply. And they give me the good feedback. Then I photo, I take a snap screenshot of that, <laughs> yeah. and that goes on my funnel. Yeah, cool. We change the screen, the funnel the screenshots on there all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then people do ring me up with amazing things. I don't never have asked for a testimonial ever. Yeah. Um, it doesn't suit that market, but they ring me. They're so happy. They send me amazing cards, gifts like yeah. you can't believe, hampers like you can't believe. I've had one couple send me every year for eight years a massive hamper with two big bottles of champagne in it every year for yeah. Christmas on my front door. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's a different cool. type of pain, I guess, for a lot of people, and it's a gratitude thing that we wouldn't know unless you're yeah. in that world of loving connection. Yeah. Yeah, right. And so you've actually never specifically asked for referrals at all. They just kind of come to you. 
mm. other than so I guess doing great work is the first thing and getting referrals right delivering delivering on your promise is probably the <laughs> the best place to start if you want to start getting you know getting some more referrals um yeah. okay cool so do you want to describe to them the system that we that we use with you on helping you get more um, applications and appointments for your yeah. program? You mean the type form? Or... Yeah, I mean, do you, like just the general, like from the ad to the um, getting someone booked into your yeah. calendar. Yeah. yeah. So um, we are targeting a female market because it's females in my world that reach out and the guys make the payments. That's how it works. Mm. So even though everyone wants to think it's equal or it's all the feminist stuff, but it isn't, not for my world. So, uh, yeah, so then I get the the form, application form, and I make a call to them. And I'm yep. not yet uh, ringing them direct from the form. I'm currently sending an email and sending a text to their mobile about the email. And in that, I give them one free giveaway video. Yep. Um, as a draw card, as a, what would you call it, lead magnet type of a thing. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty, so it's pretty simple, right? So what we do, because, and this is, again, goes back to what I was saying before, Dee, about um, choosing a really painful problem and ideally a unique problem. So yours is quite a unique relationship. Well, mm. it's not that unique in relationships, but um, mm -hmm. it is a specific relationship problem, right? So all we do is we literally advertise your program in the ad, right? We mm -hmm. say, hey, are you struggling with this? This is what this is, I'm an expert in this. Here's my credibility. If you want to know, oops, sorry, I just bumped my keyboard there. If you want to know um, more information about how I can help kind of save your marriage, click this post, leave your details, and we'll send you some more information. Basically, we'll have, we'll have a short chat. So basically, they just go from the ad to a page where they apply for your program, right? So that is like, there's no, what I'm trying to say here, there's no kind of complex webinar no, or no. five day challenge or anything crazy like that it's just add yep. application yeah and you can actually do that in a lot of different coaching markets not just not just these i'm sure you could yeah um, but the point is yeah this is the simplicity so that's what we've been doing with d and that's what's getting her you know people applying to to work with her and then we're going to be rolling that out across the us and and other areas as well mm. um so the point is, yeah, it's just it's just very simple. So that's the that's the advertising side of things and how we generate appointments and applications for D. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm interested to really know about is the um, is the media side of things for those mm -hmm. that are in the US listening to this. So D's been in what Channel Nine, um, a current yeah. affair, which is I don't know what the equivalent to that is in the US, a current affair, kind of like sixty minutes, I guess. That kind of yes, not as of, high key as that, but it's yeah, quite, yeah, it's, it's a uh, nightly program where sixty minutes every oh, is right. We, yeah. Um, and anyway, so you've been on a current affair and other other media like radio and all this stuff. And yeah, what ABC I, Radio Talkback that got me the most clients. And how did you like? How do you even get that type of that type of media? Like, what do you, yeah. what do, you do? Well, I'm not. Well, I've done a lot of stuff. So, um, I've been in if there's anywhere to comment on something i had an instinct to ring some up and tell them i had something to say a couple of times few times and each time i have yeah i've had three media coverages out of it wow. i've probably gone and spoken uh, ring them up and tell them i didn't even know there was a protocol till i did this uh, this thing recently last couple of weeks ago i think i told you about the meet the press thing yeah. so anyway uh and they were so interested um and i would just send them five sentences from a blog lead lead in to one of my blogs and say, look, you know, I saw this on that. Um, and one of them, um, the Talkback Radio, I got 29 clients from. Now that's so at the, remember, that's back in the day of the 200, that was 2018, uh, yep. to uh, $250 an hour clients. Yeah. Yep. So I bet over the next week, 29 came through and that would be huge for anybody in any business, I think, at any price. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just about fell over. I couldn't believe it. The last one uh, was last March was Current Affair. And um, it was, uh, I got two of my 25K clients out of it, one US, yeah. one US out of it, and yet it was on a current affair here. Yeah, nice. Because they, play, they do their ads, they play these short sound bites, yep. which I don't know anything, I don't know how, I now do, but I didn't know they all had that there. So it popped up when someone else was searching something else, and I have a profile over in the States because I've paid for it yep. on uh, different television stations and stuff i paid for a profiling thing yeah 
as okay. well. And I'm in Thrive Global. I've done all that stuff in the background of it over the last three, four years. Oh, okay. And yeah. so can you just, what is most interesting about what you just said there is you, you call them, right? So if there's something that you've got to comment on, so I'm assuming mm. it's something to do with like relationships or infidelity, mm. you call, what, what do you mean by that? You call them and comment on it. So can you give like the specifics of yeah, that? Because cool. that's something that a lot of coaches can do, right? They can call and say, here's who I am. Here's what I think about this. If you want, yeah. me, if you want me to do some content for you or whatever. I like, what's that like? Now, I would, now I would say don't call them because I've just learned there's a protocol to that and I stuffed it up. But my stuff was so crucial at the time. So it was okay. around Valentine's Day yep. I, um, for ABC Radio and I sent, I rang up, I didn't even know who would do it, but I asked them if they had a, I didn't even know anything about it. I don't listen to it much. I haven't got time. Yep. So anyway, I found out that they had a um, this controversial talkback program on Sunday mornings. Okay. And so I actually rang up about a topic that I had no idea that I would ever even think about. But because it was Valentine's Day, I rang up to say, uh, do they want to have any stats on how many people don't celebrate, how many couples wreck their marriage by not celebrating Valentine's Day? And that's where it went from. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, so it's cool. so keep, keep, keep going. Sorry. Yeah, so I got a low end journalist. I don't mean that, but a junior journalist. Yep. who grabbed it and just show it through the piece of paper, I understand, in front of somebody, whoever there was, I don't know. But yep. that one didn't get taken up at all. Yep. Then, though, two months later it might have been, I got a, yeah, May, May, three months later, I got a call then about what happens when couples stop having, I'll spell it so I don't get in trouble, S-E-X. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. And yep. that was... Um, that was the topic of it with and I was on with Libby Gore talk back and they got a huge uh lot or well, I thought it was a lot she thought it wasn't a lot of people calling in because it's a sensitive subject it was on a Sunday morning when people are usually with their partners or around the family I guess yeah 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 um yeah. but I thought it was for me outstanding <laughs> yeah yeah nice yeah. so I think and that's something that I've heard with getting media like you want to when you go to pitch them it has to be kind of relevant to the topic mm. and relevant and timely, I think is the best, is the best thing. And then when you went to pitch them, did they ask about your background? Because you've got quite, you know, you've got a lot of expertise yeah. in Did they say like, you know, who are you? What is your background? Did you have to communicate that to them? Yeah, you have well? it. Yes. Well, I had that already anyway, because I've been using that for things like Thrive Go Global, different publishing things along the way. Yeah. Uh, you have to have that ready if you're going to start anything with the media. You need a bio, small bio and a an A4 page of a background, okay? Yeah, okay. And yeah, got, uh, like a media kit type thing. Media yeah, kit. You have to have it ready with your headshot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they just want a headshot. So that's it. They just want something. They don't always use them. They more just like to recognise who you are between all the different producers and staff on the set or on the shows. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, if, actually, if, if someone's listening and they want to know what a press kit looks like, just go mm. to – actually, do you have it on your website, Dee? The press kit, no. Yeah, okay. I've got mine on my press. It's literally one of the menus. So just go to, um, I think it's called Media Kit for me. So just go to my website, luchan.com, and you'll be able to see it there. Mm. Um, and you'll be able to see, okay, because you've got like, you know, like your 100-word bio, then you've got your, you know, 150-word yep. bio, and then you've got your headshots and all that stuff. So it's yep. pretty basic. So if, you, if anyone wants to know what a press kit looks like, just go to my website. Yeah. Um, and you know what the thing with media, though, is for me anyway, I do, I don't do, like so I get interviewed on podcasts probably once or twice a week on average, mm. okay. And I don't do it to get clients necessarily, although I do get leads from there and and I do get clients. Where I where what I use that for is to boost my own credibility to my existing mm -hmm. leads, right? Yes. So yes, it's great that you got clients, but you know yeah. without advertising right now, one of the things that I write in your ads is I've been on Channel Nine, you know, I've been mm -hmm. on ABC Radio. That is actually more valuable than the the twenty nine clients that you got because now you've got this media yes. that you can use yeah. in your campaigns and your marketing message, you know, over and over again. So for me, that's actually the most valuable is the authority, more yes. so than getting some clients, right? Because mm -hmm. that actually doesn't happen that often. So the fact that you got clients is actually really good. Huge bonus, yeah. right? It's a bonus to what the real end result is that authority, right? That's yeah, that's true. Yeah. I didn't expect to get any clients out of it out of any of it and then yep. I think I told you I might have told you last couple of weeks ago I did this two-day meet the press uh, whole big seminar it was fantastic and I've got seven opportunities come out of that and it is all authority 
I've got seven. So it's all divided up and I'm happy to share if you want to into what you're looking at. So, you know, and the, the thing to go to, everybody should be going to this with this woman. If you're, don't matter, if they're in, she does it in Sydney and she does it in Melbourne yeah. every year. Kate, Kate Engler, her name is, yeah, E-N-G-L-E-R. Yeah. Anyway, but her way of doing it is so punchy and clear cut. So for me, I've got feature articles I've got uh, talkback radio opportunities and I've got um, week, uh, monthly segments coming at yeah, me nice. from, you know, all the main places. Yeah, that's awesome. Out of that, yeah, it was huge. Yeah, media, yeah, media is very, very powerful. Um, mm. Particularly, I think, if you systemize it, like, you, you know, it's here and if you're going to do, like, if you're going to do any strategy, really, you want to, like, do it consistently. Yes. Um, so if you're going to, for people listening, coaches listening that want to do media, don't just do like one pitch and then don't do anything for another 12 months no. be consistent with it mm. and you'll get your interviews or you'll get featured whatever it is that you want to do maybe a column or whatever or a talk back kind of piece um yes. segment but you've got to be consistent was that would you say that's the case oh well, you do and i've got a spreadsheet set up now i'm actually getting my va to run that and a few other things that i've got follow-ups that i'm having to do separate from what client follow-ups not to do with that but to do with all this to see what i sent you know i've got a log of it if you like being logged yeah nice um, yeah. to make sure i don't miss one because if i'm um, uh, not on the ball if i don't listen myself to something and i can't be across all of it i will miss something whereas i've got people looking at it for me now watching this so i've got this person yep. watching that i've got myself very organized because for me authority right now is more important than clients. Yeah. It's so, yeah, it's huge. Like again, mm -hmm. going back to that, the ad thing, right? So I do it with my own campaigns where I, you know, if, if I've got a short, I'm running a VSL at the moment to get appointments, right? A short video. And in that video, like in the, within the first three minutes, I give a quick overview of who I've worked with, right? So clients and community, Grace Lever and all these kind of Bob Proctor and all these other coaches. Mm. And that kind of, that tells people instantly yeah. Oh, this guy's not just like a coach that called himself a business coach last night. He's actually been yes. doing. He's a, he's a. So that's the power. As I said, that's the power of. of it the is. Media, is that yeah. authority? It instantly makes people mm -hmm. go, "Oh, this mm -hmm. like D Tozer. She's been on Channel Nine. She, you know, she, she's obviously an expert if she's been on Channel Nine. Mm -hmm. But there's no argument there, right? So that's again, it's so it's mm -hmm. such a powerful thing. You don't do it for the clients. You actually do it for that authority. Oh yes. You increase your conversions in your in your marketing campaigns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Uh, this is an awesome discussion. So, D, one last question before we wrap up. What would you say is your uh, biggest contributor to your success as a coach over the last, I mean, you're doing it for, for quite a while now. So what's your biggest contributor um, to being successful as a coach? Being coached? Can I say that? <laughs> yeah, you can. You can say whatever you want. I've been with coaches, significant coaches, lesser coaches. I always have a coach or mentor. Yep. Um, uh, I build it in. It's a, it's a budgeted thing constantly flowing and I'm always looking for the next one before I finish with one if I'm finishing or I continue on. Yep. I just uh, I need that accountability, I guess, keeping me fully on point because it's easy to get off point. <laughs> Absolutely. And I and totally agree. Mm -hmm. And you also like, you you know, even though you know your target market, you know your offer so well, we, we're sometimes like so close to our business that we can't mm -hmm. see certain things with our campaigns. And I'm the same, like I, yeah. I'm i a marketing guy, but I, even I have help from marketing experts because they just have a different perspective on my campaigns than what I can because I'm just so close to my own campaigns. Yes. Um, so I, I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I mentioned, I know we're running out of time, but I mentioned I got these little books, which you wouldn't think, would make a much of a difference. But I did these books mm. in 2014, 13, 14, all right? I yep. just had them as e-books on my website. Loads of people downloaded and they were free. Yep. yep. Then I made them $7 for the four. Yep. And then somebody in one of my, one, somebody who was coaching me in something in all of this, but not the books, was looking through my website and said, what are these? Yeah. I said, oh, I don't even know what I put in them. Well, do you want to do something? You should do something. Put them on Amazon. So now they sell on Amazon. And that's added another layer of authority. Yeah, wow. Yeah, it's interesting. Cool. And then this is my latest book. And then the natural one there. And the media grabbed that. They all took one home from the meet the press because we actually meet the journalists. We met 14 journalists yep. at the Kate Angler thing. And they are they sit with you and hear your pitch and you 
the whole thing. It was fabulous. So if you had a giveaway, and almost nobody did, but I did, and one or two others had a book each that they gave them. Yeah. Um, yeah that's that's the so that, part. Those, that's re those the, the relationships with the presses be a hugely valuable oh, thing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Really valuable. Hmm. Thanks, Dee. Um, I welcome. appreciate you coming on and sharing your story and thank uh, you for having me. Opening up your coaching business for us to explore. Um, I really, really appreciate that. So um, where can you know the coaches if coaches want to know more about you and you know the coaching that you do, where can they go to learn more about what it is that you do? At my website, which is my name. So it's www.d d double e t for tom o z e r dot com and the new one just being done for the new big group is couplesincrisis.com oh cool okay cool so it's d toza.com and couplesincrisis.com nice. yeah. thanks d all right so with that being said if you want to check out d go to those websites and um just one final um thing to cover with uh the six figure experts show is that we premiere these episodes uh, every week inside the hermit hole. Okay, so every, probably every, usually it's about every Tuesday, well, it's Tuesday my time, Wednesday US, they go, um, they premiere inside the hermit hole and that's where you can get access to them first. So if you want to watch these as they premiere before they go onto iTunes or Spotify or Stitcher, all you have to do is go to thehermithole.com and then when they go live, you'll be notified um, and uh, you've got to watch these and get all the information before everyone else is listening to them um, just via their podcast. But of course, they're also going to be on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. So with that being said, go to thehermithole.com. So go and check out Dan. We'll see you in the next episode.